Hello ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. We want to um, tackle a subject today that is a little bit difficult and uh, so we're going to ask you to bear with me. Everything that we talk in this channel, everything that we talk about in this channel in some way we have experienced. So the topic for today is going to be awakening. It's going to be two videos that we're going to use to talk about this topic. But you know that it is a topic that is extremely done, well done in uh, all over YouTube and uh, on all types of media. There's books around on awakening. There's um, uh, all all kinds of sources where you can go ahead and and, and study this. But what we want to do here is we want to try to avoid as much as possible. Try to avoid all terminology that has been used on this subject and try to create uh, some new termino uh, terminologies with the idea that if we put things in our own words perhaps we can gain a new perspective on it uh, so we're gonna talk about awakening awakening uh, is not something that just happens and suddenly you understand absolutely everything though that can happen to some people awakening means that we have been in a type of slumber in order for us to awaken what it means that we have been asleep so when we say that we're awakening what are we awakening from much like when we awaken for, for uh, each morning after a good night's sleep uh, sometimes when we awaken we feel you know a little bit groggy still and as the day goes on we're gonna feel better and our awakening is going to be stronger and stronger the same thing happens with spiritual awakening at first uh, we might be in for some shocks with uh, the awakening we might uh, not like what we see we might uh, not understand what we see suffering causes awakening so let's let's get into this and this is the first type the first type now we're not saying that it's the first in any sense that that it's the least important we're just saying it the first because we're just talking about it right now as the first it, it can it, it is just as valuable and just as as intense as the last type of awakening that we're going to talk about so the first type that we're going to talk about today is the type that happens with intense suffering, intense sudden suffering. Let's take an example of a car accident. Most people report within, uh, if they survive a car accident, that within the time that they were in the actual accident, time seemed to slow down. This is extremely interesting. Time seemed to slow down for others time seemed to speed up but there is an issue with time when there is an extreme sense of of uh, shock you could say or of suffering when uh, someone that we love dearly passes away we might experience uh, time slowing down during those instances when uh, we are going through something very traumatic a car accident like we mentioned before uh, a grave illness that needs some kind of a treatment our perception of the world will change for those instances where we are going through this so that's one type of awakening it is an awakening we might not be might not be familiar calling it that but that's what it is another and perhaps a bit deeper you could say is uh, some people use some esoteric practices in order to awaken and what they're told is to learn to use their senses all the five senses finely tuned into observe into observation observing your surroundings when you enter a room you can for example use your sense of vision and inspect everything as fast as possible and as extensively and as thorough as possible at the same time 
be aware of what you're seeing, be aware of what you're hearing, be aware of what you're smelling, and so on. Using all the five senses to properly be aware of the space that you're in. We know of some esoteric teachers that often do this and uh, bring our awareness to the chair that we're sitting on, the room that we're in, the color of the floor, the color of the, of the books that you might have, the color of the walls, uh, the type of furniture that you have, etc., etc. So being aware of your surroundings. So that's another type of awareness. Now, mind you, both of these, the, the sudden awareness that comes from intense suffering, from a shock, and this exercise that we're talking about is still an awareness of the mind. Now, what is the mind? Again, remember, we do not want to go into some kind of a deep dogmatic and uh, all these ideas about what the mind is. For our intents and purposes, we're just going to say that the mind is the area or the state, the place, or whatever you want to call it, where we think. That's what the mind is. Okay? Well, let's not argue about that because I know that we can get into a whole argument. Just for the sake of, of what we're talking now, let's just say that the mind is the area where we think. So, by doing this exercise that we're talking about when we are using our senses, all our senses, what they perceive, go directly to the mind. So the mind is actually fine-tuning all of these senses and is awakening in a certain in a certain regard because it's becoming aware of everything that is surrounding it now we let's go even a little more deeper than that still in the mental type of awakening there are some exercises that tell you to observe your thoughts many people have extreme experiences when they realize that they can actually observe their thoughts some even believe that they're enlightened just because they are able to observe their thoughts so when you observe your thoughts you begin to realize that you are not your thoughts that your thoughts and you whatever you might be it, are something different are two separate things but let's see if we really understand it how many of us has, has it happened to us that we are observing our thoughts and let's say we observe a little guilt or we observe a little envy or or a good one we're just uh, observing it and we go all of a sudden we go oh look I'm envious Ooh, what happened there that's not observing that's a thought thinking about another thought observing is when there's no judgment whatsoever there's no uh, thought process there's no agreement there's no disagreement there's no concept about the thought that you're observing you're just observing period that is the proper way to awaken in the mind when it comes to self-observation but that observer is still part of the mind. You could say it is the first manifestation of mind, the actual observer. It doesn't mean that that is it and that that is the ultimate level. It is a mental level. It is a good level just like the other ones. It's part of the awakening process. So what is the observer? The observer is the first part of the mind. It's the part that goes, ooh, I'm here. That's the observer, but it's not you. Let's not go into ego. Let's not go into all these other dogmatic theories and ideas. I'm not saying that they're not valid. We're just trying to use our own words to try to get a different perspective on what awakening is. There is something, another even deeper a form of mental awakening. When we begin to realize 
when we begin to realize that the mind is contained somewhere. Now, I'm not talking about the physical realm. The mind is contained in the brain. and all. No, we're not talking about that. The mind, that area of consciousness, that area that we, where we think, is contained somewhere in the vastness of space. And it needs of a, one critical element in order to exist. And it creates it all on its own. This is the next form of awakening. Time. Time is created by the mind. Time does not exist. It exists only in the realm of mind. That is another form of awakening. When you realize that time is a mental creation, is something that exists only within the constructs of a mind. In reality, there exists no time. If there is no mind, there is no time. Think about it. The mind has trouble with this. Because it, the time is exactly what it creates. But we've heard so many authors talk about the eternal now. That's a concept, a very good one, one that we personally agree with. But remember, we're not using those terms. We're not using that terminology. We're trying to come up with our own terminology so that we can create a better or just a different perspective of the same thing. So, time is created because of mind. Time exists wherever mind exists. If there is no mind, there is no time. If the mind becomes more subtle, time also becomes more subtle. So, this is a very deep form of mental awakening. There's even one more further step along the mental awakening. And that is when we learn to reside outside of the mind. There is something that holds mind in existence. And that's something we call nothing. That's something we call nothingness. Because whatever we, if we try to call it something, that's not what it is. That's where mind is. So, when we try to, to look for our true self, usually we think it's the observer, and it isn't. It, our true self will go even beyond that. But the true self is also a concept. So all this type of awakening might seem, uh, to someone who hasn't experienced it, might seem like something that perhaps... Uh, it just seems like a bunch of terminologies and like a bunch of ideas. You actually have to experience it in order to realize that it's actually true. But that's just the first level that we're going to talk about now. That does not mean that this is an inferior level, that it's a starter level, that it's a, a training. No, it's just the first level that we decided to talk about in the video. That's all. It's the first type of awakening, a mental awakening. And that's it for this video. We're not going to talk more because we don't want to make the video so long that you get bored. But the next video, and we're going to make it really soon, is the other type of awakening, which is the feeling type awakening or the heart type awakening. We spoke about the mental awakening today. Our next video, we're going to talk about awakening in the heart or in our feeling center. So I hope you enjoyed the video and we will be talking very soon. And thank you very much.